unique. Um, he was a friend, uh, a friend in two ways. One, he was a, as a mentor, as a professional, and as a friend, it was private. Uh, and and going to stay private that way. But we worked together for 25, 26 years. And uh, when I came in, I reported directly to him. He was an entrepreneur, uh, a leader, and a manager. And uh, shortly after that, we decided, let's make this a big company. He said, Fred, let's make this a major pharmaceutical company. I said, sure, let's go. He said, what do you need? And I said, I need a team of professionals who really know what they're doing. He said, okay. So we did that. And so we worked together from that time on. And in 1977, he did he, uh, something that was very unique for an entrepreneur. Uh, he made me president. And then he said, okay, I have made mine. Now it's up to you and the rest of the team to make yours and help other people make theirs by doing the things that need to be done for patients. We said, fine. Now from that time on, this is unique. He never overrode a decision that we made. Very few entrepreneurs can turn over things just like that. And so we took off from there and developed the new step of Marion, which I would call intrapreneurship, not entrepreneurship. Intrapreneurship meaning it was done within the company that already existed, and the people acted like entrepreneurs within that concept. It's not something one can define very well. You almost have to experience it. But it's a spirit of caring, uh, caring for each other, caring for the patients our, and our customers, uh, helping each other out, and it's a spirit of can-do. Uh, I remember so many things that came up, and it, came, it comes from some of the principles that, that Ewing put in, that, uh, treat others like you want to be treated, and those who produce share in the results. Uh, but there's so many things that work with the spirit, uh, how we can put our, our, our act together, our efforts together to make something happen. So that's kind of the spirit. It's a spirit, if one word may be caring. He had a unique uh, approach. He really cared for people. In the Royals, he cared for this community. Uh, the, the community supported him. And he felt he could and should support the community. He loved that. He loved also the charisma aspect of standing up there and waving people out from his suite. He, that was something he ate up, which was fun. Uh, he had a lot of fun with, with the Royals. But uh, he cared for this community and he did not want to let it down. When we won the series in 1985, we knew how excited that was, exciting that was for the community and how they supported him. He said, I don't want them to lose that. I want them to keep that and make that something that's permanent here in the Kansas City area. Well, he was a great guy, but I think one of the things that he would want to be known as, uh, I'm, a, I'm just a regular guy who did uncommon things, he would not like to see himself made into some type of a mythical character that you had to be in order to be successful. He said, no, I'm just a common guy. I did things because I focused on what needed to be done. Uh, and it was, it was, it was also fun. It was fun to work with him. He had a lot of ideas. He may give you 10 of them and maybe one of them might be a good idea, but he kept coming. They kept coming with ideas and ideas and ideas, and that was great. And uh, he had a lot of unique uh, fa factors that affected all of us. And so uh, I think, thank you, it was good. This work and research was funded by the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation. The contents of this publication are solely the responsibility of the grantee.